it's Joseph with Gilsey Pixels and in this video I'm going to cover how do you uh, take a scanned image and convert it to uh, vector format uh, in Adobe Illustrator. So uh, this is actually part two in a three-part video series where I'm covering how to do a hand illustrated logo from scratch. So uh, right here on my desktop I've got my scanned image. Let's jump into my computer here. Uh, by the way if you missed video one uh, then you'll want to subscribe to my newsletter so you don't miss any more videos. Uh, but the link will be below this video here as well. Uh, so, in the previous video, we also uh, we, we really covered all the details on how to create what you're seeing here on, on my screen, uh, this, this scanned image. So, all the, all the scanned settings for this uh, are either beneath this video or they're linked beneath the video. But now I want to convert this pixel information to from roster graphic to vector format, right? So I have an Adobe Illustrator file to work with. So when I click, it selects the entire image. Now I'm going to go to the object menu, which is probably outside of your screen here, uh, or outside of the recording, excuse me. I'll select image trace, make and expand. So again, I went to object, image trace, make and expand. It's uh, showing a warning here because I have a nice high resolution scan. I'm going to click OK, and I'm going to let Illustrator do its magic. There we go. So now, uh, as you can see, if I type Command A on my Mac on the PC, it's probably Control A, I'm guessing. I haven't used a PC in a while, but you can see all these points now uh, because this has now been traced to vector format, um, or I'm sorry, vector elements. It's not vector format until we save it. So anyway. We now have vector paths in this document, if that makes sense. When we save it, it will be vector format. So, all right, so at this point, I wanna select, um, I'm going to switch to the direct select tool, and I'm going to click, first I'm gonna click outside, or you could type Command D to deselect, uh, but I'm going to click on each of the uh, elements here. I'm going to shift click, I'm sorry. Shift clicking to select each of the elements that are uh, black here on my screen because I want to delete the paths outside of these elements. So now I'll go up to the select menu and select inverse. Again, that's outside of the screen recording, but you want to access select and inverse. There we go. So now I've actually selected everything in this document that is not, or all the paths in this document that are not these black elements. Now I will type a delete. Boom. There it is. And so I just, or we just together, if you're following along, which I hope you are, we just eliminated the path that's outside of the shapes that we actually want. So now when I click, I don't get anything because there's no more path here, which is what we wanted. So now, uh, depending on your document, um, you might need to group these elements together. Mine's already grouped. And uh, as you can see here, you just have one layer. You can see it's a group. Um, so, if I switch back to the other uh, selection tool, uh, right here, when I click on any of these shapes, I get the entire uh, logo. And at this point, I can uh, change colors if I want to. Okay, so depending on how your Illustrator is set up, uh, you may or may not run into this issue. But if I try to select the color, if I click on my logo, and I double click, and I pick a nice color for my palette, it's going to give me grayscale. I don't want that. Uh, with this element still selected, um, I'm going to go over to my color palette um, and I will select RGB or CMYK depending on, well, CMYK is really more for print. RGB is fine for web. So anyway, um, now I can actually pick a, an actual color for my design. So anyway, uh, now the last step is to do file save as and now I can save it as Adobe Illustrator ready to go and now this is a legit vector format um, as you can see here on my desktop here's my AI file so now I have the industry standard format I can also save as and go to file save as and select an EPS format on my desktop boom now I have two versions of it so I hope that was handy for you uh, if you receive this tutorial from my newsletter, then I will be sending you the third and final uh, video in this series uh, soon. 
So be on the lookout for that. And it will cover how to apply a vintage texture to this logo to really uh, complete the hand illustrated uh, vintage flavor. So again, I hope this has been handy for you and uh, good luck on your design project.